Everyone here is the best there is. Who the hell are they gonna get to teach us? Good morning, aviators. This is your captain speaking. What the hell kind of mission is this? Here we go. In three, two, one. Having any fun yet? Wow, what an amazing team, the Top Gun team for our SolidWorks 2023 What's New launch. Also the 3D experience work will be in there. Um, I'm glad to uh, see you all here and wishing you a very, very good launch. Uh, you better hold on to your seats. We have lots and lots of new things to show you. Um, we're going to have an amazing time together. Um, I'm Alain Provo. Uh, I'll be your host for this event and let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about us at uh, Solid Experts. We are here to help you out through our uh, services, not only from the software side of, uh, of uh, SolidWorks, but also uh, through our services. If you need any consulting, uh, optimization, automatization, we have the teams to be able to help you out through those um, uh, division. Um, also, if you need any um, uh, tuition, we have all the expertise to coach you uh, as well. We do it uh, uh, both um, in-house, uh, online. We have hybrid solution. So I'm pretty sure we have something in there to accommodate you. Plus, um, we have also our 3D printing department that is there to help you out. Either you need to, uh, to have some prototyping, uh, either you need to do a low production kind of uh, 3D printing, we're going to be able to help you out uh, choosing the right machine for you, the right type of materials that you need for the right job. So, uh, not going on uh, too, uh, too long here, I want to uh, present you your uh, presenters for this year lunch. So I myself, Trickshot, Alain Pro, you're gonna have Chong Ping Flo Lu that will also be a presenter, and Michael Hollywood Abridge will also be a presenter for this 2023 lunch. And let's move on and go see what's in there for you guys. All right, so let's jump into our first topic, the user experience. And to do so, we'll use the sewing machine model. Uh, this model is pretty cool and it will show the nice improvement we have inside the user experience uh, this year. So um, while you work with SolidWorks, you expect the best out of the best. So let's see what we can do with that. Um, on this model, I need to put a comment so this comment now have improvements like I'm typing right now. Now I can modify the text by making it bold, uh, making it italic or underscored. Uh, I can easily take a snapshot. And also I can go inside my library image to pick up the right tag I need to be added on the machine. Also, I can change the background of the message to prioritize the message. I can personalize, customize the menu, and also I can click the show on open. This means that my message will be put correctly and seen right as the file is open. If you're like me, you like to use the toolbars as you go on inside your SolidWorks. But sometimes the screen gets polluted with all those toolbars. But now inside SolidWorks, you'll be able to go into the restore default of these and reset at the level that you need. Only the toolbars, the toolbars and menus, go back to the default parameters in just a click, you'll be able to do that. Also, for the rendering while you work, the performance is already checked in. So this way you won't pass by the performance of your SOLIDWORKS because this on a machine that's been built for using SOLIDWORKS, you get up to 
about an average of 120 FPS. So this is great when you work. So remember, doing markups or comments, um, using the comments inside SolidWorks or using the markups on the 3D experience works um, will get the right message to the right people on the right time. Uh, I hope these tools will help you communicate better with your teams and get your project finished much quicker like that. So we're gonna pass on the next menu uh, or next topic, <laughs> sorry, for the presentation. All right, moving on to our next topic, which is parts and feature. We're gonna check the SOLIDWORKS 2023 improvements on this topic. And to do so, we'll use this mountain scooter. Uh, it looks like a really neat toy. I would love to have one like that. So um, what we're gonna see in those improvements is a few uh, things that have been improved in um, making our uh, models con in, into the conception. So not new features, but some improvement on already existing features. So let's get into SOLIDWORKS and open up our model. And as you can see here, uh, in this uh, scooter, I will need to apply some modification. So let's check this out. All right, so uh, we're moving in to the model and we'll work on that handle. It's pretty too uh, silky smooth. So maybe we can uh, get this thing a little better. First thing is to add the logo with a singular line font that can be engraved now inside SOLIDWORKS, a great improvement. Another thing here that has been improved is how intelligent features will be able to be corrected if there's an error while trying to use it. I don't need to go back into the intelligent function to be able to correct that in that function. I can correct it right live in the model now. So doesn't make me redo everything. And another uh, great improvement is in the ellipse. Uh, those ellipse now have the construction lines that can be added automatically. This helps me constrain my ellipse pretty easily and makes it a lot easier to uh, complete whatever I want to do on that model. So right now I'm adding up some variables on it and I extrude that dimple as another body on the model. And now with the new move body inside SOLIDWORKS, I can add those variables and even put an equation inside there. So makes me uh, do this a lot more easier than I, I used to do in the past. So if I need to create an iteration of my model here, the equation table will help me do this a lot quicker than going back into each functions manually. A great improvement inside SOLIDWORKS how to create my model. Also, in the past, to make my models lighter, I used to use the feature, a great, great function to be able to simplify our model. Well, this year, SOLIDWORKS brought this another level I can do my D feature and now I can create a new configuration. So this is a lot more easier to use a configuration instead of a saved part with the D feature functions into it. So less links to uh, manage, a lot more easier to use inside your models. I hope these great tricks will help you use SOLIDWORKS 2023 in a better way that you are using your SOLIDWORKS right now. Oh, I'll move up to the next uh, uh, topics and I think it's Flo that will present you the next topic, which is administration. I'll come back to you guys later. Thank you. Let's see what's new in the administration. 
uh, with uh, the flow simulation SNL licensing, the uh, SOLIDWORKS add-ins command manager has been reworked. We now have under flow simulation a new flyout menu that lets us choose between the four different products. So we have flow simulation, flow simulation and the HVAC module, flow simulation and the electronics cooling module, or all of them. So this uh, allows us to be conscient about which license we are currently using. A new option is available in the Solid Network License Manager. So it will allow us to automatically load flow simulation modules when they are available. Now some updates on the licenses. If you currently own a term license, you will get a warning when this license is about to expire. So let's say that in 15 days, the license is about to expire, you will get a prompt when you start SOLIDWORKS. In the activation license window, the licenses that are about to expire will be shown in red. This helps you avoid some important delays when it comes to licensing. Another enhancement here, with SOLID 2023, you can now remove or add a license while you are transferring it without going through the installation manager, which saves you some extra steps. This ends the section on the administration. We are now ready for the next topic. Hello, my name is Michael Habrish, and I'm an application specialist at Solid Experts. Today, I'm going to be covering some of the cloud capabilities available to you on the 3D Experience platform, starting with 3D Sculptor. The 3D Sculptor role gives you access to XShape, which is a browser-based CAD application that enables you to create complex parts with ease. This is done by using primitive subdivision bodies, like a box or a cylinder, and manipulating them using control points to create unique designs. Features like crease, align, Symmetry and Extrude will help you obtain the shape that you're looking for, and you can even use existing sketches and curves to create new sub-D surfaces. Here's a video that highlights all of the benefits of 3D Sculptor. Products today have more style and complexity than ever, but turning design ideas into functional CAD models can be difficult with traditional modeling tools. 3D Sculptor takes a simpler, freeform approach that unlocks endless possibilities, offering subdivision modeling from a browser on any connected device. Let's see how Dan Designer leverages the XShape app in 3D Sculptor to complete a stylish exterior for the latest sea scooter design. Dan's new component starts with a few reference images. And then subdivision modeling begins with a primitive shape or surface that can be scaled uniformly or with a bounding box. You can push, pull, scale, or rotate the sub-D elements with the on-screen manipulator to sculpt any shape that you can imagine. You can add or remove edges or subdivide faces for more localized control. Curvature continuity is maintained throughout, but if sharp edges are needed, add a crease and make adjustments on the fly. Pop-up notifications and built-in task management make it easy to collaborate on design projects. Teammates can add comments, share models, and track each other's progress, all within the design workspace. Align sub-D elements to sketches or model geometry from other components and achieve a high level of precision with numeric inputs. Turn on symmetry to automatically mirror changes. Add more material with the extrude command or insert an entirely new sub-D body. Make irregular selections with the lasso tool and align sub-D elements to a curve that can be drawn right on screen. Sometimes manipulating a sub-D body causes surfaces to intersect. The mesh inspection tool isolates these issues and the cage view makes it easy to refine the problematic areas.
The net surface command is perfect for creating sub D surfaces based on sketches and curves already set up in the model. Parameters of the new surface can be adjusted before sculpting it into shape. Turn on the working zone to isolate specific areas of the active sub D body or surface. Multiple sub D bodies can be combined into a master model and split up into individual components for manufacturing. Handing off the design is as easy as dragging the updated model onto the task and moving it to complete. Adding manufacturing details can be done in XDesign or SOLIDWORKS desktop, so designers can always work in their app of choice. As the design of the C scooter continues to evolve, make a new revision with built-in data management or create a branch when it's time to explore an entirely new concept. 3D Sculptor's freeform environment allows you to create complex shapes and surfaces more easily than ever. Collaborate with teammates to take your designs from concept to production, all from a browser on any connected device. What's important to note after that is that X-Shape has the capability to work in tandem with X-Design or SOLIDWORKS. This means that you can start making a complex body in X-Shape and then seamlessly transition into either X-Design or SOLIDWORKS to add more parametric geometry to your model. Finally, I should point out that all of the X-Apps have built-in data management for creating a proper life cycle of your designs, including revisions and tasks. So next up, we're going to continue with the C-Scooter design, but this time in 3D Creator. The 3D Creator role gives you the power of X-Design. Like X-Shape, X-Design is also on the cloud and it offers the same design tools that you're used to seeing in SOLIDWORKS. However, with the latest updates, you'll have access to features like Design Assistant, which uses AI to avoid repetitive selections, or Smart Mates, which automatically suggests relevant mate types when dragging components in assembly. You can even add production-ready physical threads to design elements, which can then be 3D printed and used right away. These features and many more will save you hours of design time, so here's another video that shows you the power of X-Design. Developing products requires more flexibility and teamwork than ever, and traditional design tools aren't always equipped to handle modern teams spread across the globe. 3D Creator provides industry-leading parametric modeling on the cloud in any browser, connecting all the people and data needed to take products from idea to delivery. Let's see how Dawn Designer uses the X-Design app in 3D Creator to complete the latest C-Scooter assembly. Dawn's first task is to design the battery enclosure. Part design typically begins with a sketch, and then useful commands are easily accessible from context menus or shortcut rings. Easily switch between extrude, revolve, and sweep all from one command using super features. User parameters can drive both sketch and feature geometry, so design changes update predictably. Shortcut rings adapt to the working environment to keep the most relevant commands close at hand, and command parking adds sketches or reference geometry on the fly without leaving the feature. Design assistance anticipates the next step, so sketching is less repetitive and selections are faster than ever. Skip the sketching and extrude from any existing face. And create complex blends with a variable radius fillet. Drag and drop to insert a part into an assembly open in another X-Design window. Assembly components is easy with intuitive context tools that recommend mate types based on selected geometry. Create a new component from an existing feature right in the context of the assembly. You can even import PCBs and other ECAD files in traditional IDF formats. Snap to fit mating tools speed up repetitive assembly tasks. And artificial intelligence helps predict the placement of similar components. Copy with mates replicates components where patterns don't apply.
and advanced mates allow designers to visualize complex motion scenarios. Built-in collaboration tools connect teams so working together on designs is easier than ever. Create and review markups to clearly communicate ideas and share updated models all within the design workspace. Drive component patterns in assemblies with pattern features from existing geometry. Reusing sketches from other components like the SeeDo logo saves time and ensures standardization. Create cosmetic or production-ready physical threads for most standard thread types, and then 3D print those threads using the Print 3D feature. Integrated 3D printing places components in a virtual print bed configurable to the settings of most 3D printers. The Auto Arrange tool intelligently lays out parts to avoid merging, and Support Analysis determines what areas in the design will need support during printing. Begin physical prototyping in no time by connecting to supported cloud printers or exporting in most common 3D formats. 3D Creator gives you the tools you need to complete design tasks, connect with teammates, and prepare for manufacturing, all from a browser on any connected device. So just some cool things that you can do with the 3D Creator role on the 3D Experience platform. Thank you, Hollywood. And now we're gonna go with the next topic. The next topic is uh, sheet metal and structures. And to go through the improvement we have this year, we'll use the little buggy um, that we have to do so. So a few improvements have been uh, uh, brought inside SOLIDWORKS sheet metal and the structure system that are very interesting. First one in sheet metal is gonna be how we can now uh, manage alerts inside SOLIDWORKS. So let's say that I open up that model, just like so, and verify the profile of it and decide to make any changes. Well, now you see I have an alert in my tree. And this means I can put a sensor for the bounding box of my, of my material. This, this is very helpful because now I'll be able to know if I design something that is outside of the limits of my material. So right now, I did uh, make a change that was over the limit. I readjust everything. I know it's gonna be correct for my model. I'm glad. Another problem often is while we design, we put everything in order. Like my, my bent here, they have the same bent radius but when i check on my model they're not the same that's normal because one is inside band the other one is an outside band so now in solidworks you can just put symmetric on the information and there you go my band radius will be the same as easy as that so inside my drawings now Another improvement is that my annotation will contain the sheet gauge metal information. No more needs to do it manually. That's going to be fantastic. So let's go into the structure system now. I need to uh, make a cage to carry this uh, little buggy from place to place. So now inside our um, structure system, as easy as that to create the structure system, as always, the improvement is in the corner management. Now, inside our structure system, we will be able to select a corner once we need to edit the trim, just like this, and group similar corners. No more need of doing them all one by one. Wow, that's a great improvement in structure system and it's gonna accelerate your work so much more. So as simply as that, now all the corners that have been grouped are looking great. If I had some uh, other parts in there, I'm gonna be able to use the same grouping method as quickly as we did the, the corner trim. So 
it's going to populate my assembly real quickly. Isn't that fantastic? Is that enough? Well, it looks like it's not enough. We can now configure the dimensions of the profiles we're going to use inside the structure system. So no more need to uh, save as to uh, create a new uh, structure system. So I hope these improvements will help you create your work faster than before, easier than before, and more organized than before. So don't forget, we still have our tools on the 3D Experience Works that can also do that if you need to work cloud-based. Oh, we'll go to the next topic. Right now, it's going to be assembly, uh, my next topic. So let's go and take a look at that. All right, so let's go into our topic of assemblies inside SolidWorks. Um, through the years, SolidWorks assemblies have brought intuitive and efficient workflow capabilities to help bring your complex models to life. Well, with SOLIDWORKS 2023 expands on new assembly enhancements and continues to accelerate performances. So let's dive in and explore some of these inspiring new capabilities. Creating assembly pattern is a common time-saving practice. Patterns such as this linear pattern often require some instances to be skipped with differing variations. The traditional workflow would need multiple pattern features or instances to be suppressed and unsuppressed depending on the desired configuration. Well, with SOLIDWORKS 2023, this is no longer the case. Any pattern type that supports skip instances now supports configuration, offering more direct way to modify your pattern. With cost being a consideration here, Having a rubberized wheel might be a better option than the current ball bearing section. Selection. Using the replace component is a, place, is a simple way to swap out existing parts and now you'll see additional options have been added in 2023. It welcomes the ability to replace a single component, multiple component in the current assembly and the current behavior of the assembly and sub-assembly levels. You also see a new preview window giving direct visual feedback, ensuring accurate component replacement every time. Maybe the mates will uh, run with an error when rebuilt, but a simple right click on the mate folder will correct them rapidly. With multiple configuration included in this assembly, You'll want to ensure the bill of materials appropri appropriately reflects each instances. In previous version of SOLIDWORKS, this option could be set in the configuration or bill of materials property, a, ma a manual and often overlooked process. Now, in 2023, it offers a new document property type allowing configuration to be used as the default bump part number, enabling this option will make certain unique configuration are accurately, accurately represented. Now to allow for proper assembly of the manufactured model, an assembly level cut will be needed to assist in accessing some key fasteners. New to SOLIDWORKS 2023, assembly cut cuts now includes the same end condition as seen at the part level expanding flexibility to your design intent. In this case, adding an up to the surface will automate the exact cut depth regardless of any changes to the convoyer geometry. Using a box select will gather all intersecting parts to be included in the cut, which includes some toolbox components. This could lead to some issues downstream with the propagate to part option check new to SOLIDWORKS 2023. The toolbox components are automatically removed from the list and a notification is shown, giving you an extra level of security to share your toolbox library. Taking a look at the conveyor assembly, multiple, multiple configuration have been created to speed up the layout process. Magnetic mates have also been defined 
but depending on which configuration, different magnetic co connection points may or may not be needed in here. Now in SOLIDWORKS 2023, adds new functionality to magnetic mates by allowing you to suppress and unsuppress individual connection points. This new feature brings extended functionality to an already powerful way to approach your assembly process. This also working on the display state makes it a lot less heavier in your screen while you work. You see less point, it's easier to complete your assembly. Assembly visualization offers a dynamic way to display and sort information about your assembly. In 2023 now, additional support for lightweight mode is introduced, no longer requiring you to resolve components for properties such as mass and total weight. Plus, the properties drop-down list also have been updated to an alphabetical order a much more intuitive way to locate commonly used property such as a graphic triangle, mass, other things. You also notice that the rollback bar has also been taken to make it for a much easier mouse selection and use. We'll see the next um, improvement as the optimized uh, and resolved open large assembly later on. So this, we'll, we'll check it out on a separate um, slide afterwards. So as you can see, this assembly got quite a lot bigger than expected maybe. And now we have a new way to export that assembly in step as the top level assembly. So this will keep the structure of your assembly but in a much lighter way if you need to collaborate with other people uh, inside your uh, your company or outside the company so they'll be able to see the structure of your assembly still i hope all of these uh, improvements will help you work inside solidworks more significantly and more quickly than you used to, to do. So let's go to the next topic, which will be drawings. All right, let's move to the next topic, which is drawings. It's very simple inside SOLIDWORKS to open drawings. You simply open SOLIDWORKS, drawing, making drawing out of your concept, drag, drop, resize, maybe add a bomb, uh, maybe uh, some balloons, automatic balloon also. Uh, all of that is very simple. Um, sometimes we do need to look for drawings. Well, now, uh, right click inside the tree, opens a drawing. What happens then? Maybe in a cell, you do a right click, open a drawing. Or on the graphic area, you could also open a drawing. So no more looking through the folders to find your drawings. They're at the tip of your fingers. If you're like me, sometimes you had a, a row or column inside your bumps and then quantities also. Now, inside SOLIDWORKS 2023, you can identify every column that has been man-made. So this way, you always see what has been done from human part instead of automatism of SOLIDWORKS. Um, quantities in the balloons. This is a great option. It cleans out how the balloon are showed and that's great for me. Well, since the bomb have been for a long time related with Excel, now here are the filters that we can use in our bombs inside our drawings just like in excel this is a very very powerful way to improve your bombs to how you want them to look and filter them so that you have the right bomb at any time in your drawings naturally you can export that as an excel quickly um, another thing that you can do inside is that once you save it as an excel 
well, or a CSV, you can rename that BOM uh, very easily. Another feature that's been added is that if you're like me, I do a lot of creation that needs transparency, that have glass or things like that. Now you have an option to make the see through always visible by default. So this means when you drag and drop your part inside SOLIDWORKS, the transparency will be visible at the first insert. So I hope all these improvements in the drawings will help you work more efficiently. Um, also, some new tools have been added for the GDT tolerance boxes, which will help you out. Don't forget the collaboration into the 3D experience works is so easy. Let's go and take a look inside SOLIDWORKS routing. Um, just to take a little uh, advantage of the uh, electrical uh, side inside your concept, um, we have a nice fridge here that we're going to take a look at. Inside that fridge, there's a lot of different routing that can be done through the add-in of SOLIDWORKS. Tubular, um, electrical for harnessing and stuff. So we're going to go and take a little look at the uh, main harness. Um, also, we can take a look at the attributes in there. And, and these attributes now tell me the diameter and the length of the wires, which is a good improvement inside SOLIDWORKS routing. Plus, I can show a cross section of that cable. And it's going to show me the different wires that are in there, even if there's none that are not used. And also, the flat pattern of that routing is much more easier to create now inside SOLIDWORKS routing. Plus, the balloons have the same capability that you have also in the normal ballooning of SOLIDWORKS drawing. You can manage them as you want. You can have the quantities outside. You can use them just like in SOLIDWORKS drawing. You see that when I move over uh, one of, of my table, it shows a dotted line to where it is connected. So you see where each table is aiming at. If I decide to add a column or a table, I can decide to do this in one table or all the tables at the same time. Right now, we need to make modification into that project. So I see what the designer is asking me, not putting in the new uh, uh, in input line. I need to cross those lines and, and make my connections. And now, inside SOLIDWORKS, it's possible to do it. I can simply insert my new components to connect and then ask for the route to be proposed. And if it's something I think is good for me, I can select and choose them. It's going to split and it's going to create that connection for me. So a great way to use SOLIDWORKS routing to make your cables. Another great improvement is that now those libraries can be moved onto the 3D Experience Works platform. This means no more different libraries between different users. We can all use the same library inside our project. This is a great improvement. Let's now move on to SOLIDWORKS Visualize, which is our solution to create renderings of your products. This year, we will focus on the simplicity of the process. Visualize 2023 speeds up import by filtering only the most applicable options for SOLIDWORKS files. At this point, do we want the individual control provided by the component part body option? Or do we want all the same appearances in one part? 
The component part body option works the same as the automatic mode in the previous versions, but has been improved this year. This option, this import option will allow you to mimic the structure of the SOLIDWORKS assembly while retaining control of the appearances in, in Visualize. This, as a, this allows you to, be, to take better advantage of groupings such as subassemblies already defined in the SOLIDWORKS model. Let's see what's new for scenes like GLTF files. In 2023, standard option, standard import options are still available for all non-SOLIDWORKS files. In renderings of complex or detailed models, we would like to be able to improve the performance of the preview. What we would like to get a feedback with the lighting effects depending on the configuration. In Visualize 2023, the handling of PBR material previews have been, has been improved, which gives us a much better idea of how light reacts with roughness maps, alpha transparency, and many more effects. We can even see the light from the HDR glistening off of the wet spots on, of our model, allowing us to be more, much more confident in our setup while enjoying the performance benefits of the preview mode. Let's look at a uh, common use case of rendering which is to create a colorway showing a variety of potential color options. We have the import appearances option, which groups all the same appearances into a single unit. Nothing new here, but the hardest part is coming. That is to find all the necessary colors, codes, color charts, references, and try to match them in Visualize. The color picker has been vastly improved, making it now the easiest part of the process. We can bring colors from almost any source. A tab dedicated to color palettes is available with, with some default palettes. Custom palettes can be imported directly from SOLIDWORKS from an A Adobe ACO file, a logo as a vector file, or from a web page CSS or HTML file. Once imported, we have full control over the palettes. Searchable names are present, and the swatches can be applied immediately. The color dialog can now be unducked and remains available for all actions. If there are colors that are not available to import, they can be added as in previous versions. On the color tab, color can be selected with the graphical display and the hue slider is now present in RGB as well as in HSV. We can now paste a hex code and define other color models. As always, the color picker can be used to select a value anywhere on the screen and its color preview has been enlarged for greater precision when selecting. We can add a chosen color to our palette and lock it to prevent any changes. Palettes can be exported as shared assets between users and imported back into SOLIDWORKS. The previous eight color selections will, almost, will also remain in, in recent colors for all sessions. It's a big improvement on the color management system that saves you endless clicks to find your colors. Visualize 2023 introduces a new rendering engine. In the options 3D viewport, we have the Stellar Physically Correct Engine. We can expect a performance similar to the iRay and great things to come. Once the renders are complete, they can be shared on the 3D Experience platform for the rest of the team to view, use, and even comment on. This helps reduce the time to, that it takes to produce engaging content for sales, marketing, websites, 
and social media campaigns. SolidWorks Visualize 2023 therefore brings more life to CAD models. We're now ready for the next part. In this next section, I want to focus on some of the collaboration tools that are available to you when working on the cloud. Not only does the 3D Experience platform offer a safe place to store your CAD data, but it allows you to share and manage that data how you want. You can use digital markups to capture design ideas and then assign tasks to make those design ideas come to life. Revision management will then help you create new versions of your models without having to worry about where your files are. You've been considering a solution to manage your SOLIDWORKS data for years, but it's just felt daunting. Hardware investments are expensive, implementations are resource intensive, and in the end, do you really have the time? Let's see how Eric and his team overcame these common barriers with Collaborative Designer for SOLIDWORKS on the 3D Experience platform. With the 3D Experience platform, there's minimal configuration, so within minutes, Eric is able to begin securely saving his data to the cloud directly from within SOLIDWORKS. Bookmarks provide a familiar way for him to organize and structure his designs, so with a simple save, Eric's design is secure and his custom properties are extracted. And with built-in lifecycle management, he can control design access privileges simply by updating the status. Without purchasing a single server, Eric's team can now access his designs from anywhere with a web browser. Pete is in product management and not a SOLIDWORKS user. When he's on site with his supplier to review the product structure, he has direct access to Eric's released designs. With the help of tags and filters, he can quickly visualize those parts that will be made and those that will be purchased. When Pete's supplier provides him feedback that can improve the design, Pete captures the ideas in a markup. Red line sketches on the model help to convey that the lower bracket could directly support the piston, reducing the number of parts and strengthening the overall design. To get the feedback to Eric, Pete used to send emails with a few sketches as attachments. Now, he simply creates a task, assigns it to Eric, and drags and drops the markup and assembly onto the task, streamlining the design feedback and collaboration. Back at the office, Eric is able to access Pete's task right inside of SOLIDWORKS. He updates the status and then opens the assembly with a simple drag and drop. The assembly is brought local to his machine, ensuring optimal performance. Opening the markup in the task pane provides Eric a convenient reference to the changes he needs to make. Eric would have traditionally spent a lot of time renaming and replacing files to represent the new revision. Now, he simply bumps the revision on the affected part and the assembly, and the references are managed for him. He modifies the geometry as requested by Pete, and with the help of the integrated search, finds just the right piece of hardware to finish the task. With the changes made, Eric updates the release status of the design and finalizes the task. With Collaborative Designer for SOLIDWORKS, managing and collaborating on your SOLIDWORKS data has never been more accessible. And as your needs grow, the 3D Experience Works will continue to help you overcome barriers with connected change management, project management, and release management features. Let's continue with SOLIDWORKS simulation. For the 2023 release of SOLIDWORKS we're simulation, now ready to jump we're going to next focus topic. on how quick you can create and run your analysis. Let's have a look at this sewing machine here. And let's focus on this mechanism that we have here, and which is a very simple mechanism made of a system of a cam and a follower, which allows us, which allows us to raise this presser foot part so we can insert the fabric and put a pressure on it. In fact, we already have a stress analysis created. It's a static analysis. So we can get the stress, the displacement, and the strain results.
pretty simple analysis that we have here. However, it involves a it, it however it it involves time required to solve the contact. It's a contact between the follower and the cam. So let's explore a new option. But first, let's make a copy of this analysis and then go to the static analysis properties. And we have this new option, the contact penalty stiffness scale factor. It's a value between 0 0.01 and 1. So a value of 1 would be a precise or accurate contact, just like in the previous versions. And a value of 0 0.01 would correspond to a, a approximate contact. So let's give it a try, the value of 0 0.01, and run this analysis. Yes, we may be wondering why, why should we use a lower contact or a uh, contact with a lower accuracy. It's because we would like to run the analysis faster. So let's first compare the results between the original analysis and the simplified analysis. On the left side, we have the original analysis with a, a factor of 1. And on the right side, we have the simplified version of the analysis with a factor of 0 0.01. So we can see that the results are pretty similar between the stress and the displacement results. All right, so now let's compare the time that it took to run both analysis. It took 12 seconds to run the original analysis. And for the simplified version of the, the analysis, it took six seconds only. So yes, it, it's six seconds faster. But let's see it this way. It could have been six minutes instead of 12 minutes, or it could have been an hour instead of two hours. That's how we should see it. It's 50, it's 50 times, it's 50% 50 faster. So yes, in this case, we traded accuracy for productivity. Okay, so let's see what's next. We have this needle bar, and we are looking to evaluate how strong this needle bar is. Uh, however, we're not interested by the, uh, by the stress in, in the screws. So let's exclude them from the, from the analysis. So we get a simplified version of this analysis. So yes, in this case, it would involve creating bounded interactions. So let's create some local interactions. Uh, and let's see uh, what enhancement that we have here. Uh, for the previous versions, when creating a bounded a bounded interaction between two entities that are different, and especially two entities that are separated from each others, we could encounter some difficulties. But it's much easier now in the 2023 release. just like this. The next step would be to run the, anal the analysis and then get the results. All right. Uh, let's see what's next. OK, so let's discuss about the uh, diagnostic tools, such as the simulation evaluator, the uh, under constrained bodies, the diagnostic tools for the mesh, the simulation command manager has been enhanced in the 2023 release with this new flyout menu. So this is the diagnostic tools flyout menu where we can have where we, we see all diagnostic tools, the under constrained bodies, the simulation evaluator, the interaction viewer, 
and both mesh failure and mesh quality diagnostics. And the this file menu is placed right before we run the, the analysis, just to remind us that we need to, to, to make sure that the, the analysis is correct before running it. For the, for the under constraint bodies feature, we've got an enhancement here. So for simulation professional users, it's much faster now when we run this calculation to find out the, the under constraint bodies. So we get almost instant feedback on the bodies that are still, that are still under constraint. In the previous versions, it took some time to, to get this feedback. All right. And for simulation premium users, yes, we've got some enhancements for you too. Uh, remember in the last release, we introduced the linkage rod connector. Okay, so we would like to apply a, a connector to replace the selected part on the screen, which, which we are going to exclude from the, the analysis here. This linkage rod connector now works in nonlinear and dynamic analysis starting from SARWIX 2023. So simply create this linkage rod by selecting the entities for the end joint one and end joint two. Just like this. And we've got the other side. All right. Then we have the section parameters. Let's use the solid, solid rectangular with its section properties. And it's done. The next step would be to run the analysis and then we can get the results. As a summary, in SARS 2023, we have a new penalty stiffness control for contacts, an improved bounding interactions for non-touching faces, a new diagnostic tools flyout menu, an enhanced under constraint bodies solver, and the linkage rod connector now works for nonlinear and dynamic studies. This ends the SOLIDWORKS simulation section. Let's keep going with the SOLIDWORKS 2023 launch with the advanced simulation. Yes, by advanced simulation, we are going to bring you to the next level when it comes to simulation. Let's first have a look at the image here and think about what we could imagine. We can see a needle break. This means that a nonlinear analysis may be required, even a dynamic analysis. Why not using an explicit solver to solve such complex problem that involves a brief transient dynamic event? Or why not running the calculations on the cloud and take advantage of the power of the cores to solve? Let's explore Simulia on the 3D experience, which uses the technology of Abacus. Abacus is the world leading solution when it comes to simulation. We are going to use the sewing machine again here. We can solve simple static problems, just like with SOLIDWORKS simulation. But when it comes to problems like a needle break, that's how Simulia could be very helpful. Simulia will provide power, scalability, and collaboration to the analysis. First, we can automate the materials transition by importing a SOLIDWORKS materials library into the 3D experience, which eliminates the need of manual tasks. Materials properties are converted into Abacus multi-physics properties, we only need to add additional damage properties to be able to solve the analysis. 
back in SOLIDWORKS, it's possible to centralize the material libraries. An analysis can be directly transferred from SOLIDWORKS simulation to Simulia along with all materials, loads, and boundary conditions so we don't need to recreate the analysis. A new analysis with an explicit dynamic step can be created to get a response from the needle break problem. The calculations can be solved on the cloud, which is an option, but it will significantly reduce the time required to get the results. While solving, the simulation can be monitored on the platform. That's about up to 144 cores to run the calculations, which is huge. So a high-end computer may not even be required. Solving the calculations locally is also possible. Results are obtained, and it's time to optimize the product. So a parametric analysis is here for that. Alternative solutions based on goals constraints and parameters are then generated and the 3D model in SOLIDWORKS can be replaced by the optimal design. A durability analysis is available which is equivalent to a fatigue analysis. Therefore, we could evaluate where and when the part will fail due to fatigue. This allows to improve the product's durability by applying required modifications to the geometry. The analysis is stored on the 3D experience. This makes it easy to share the results with anyone on the platform who can view, comment, annotate, and it facilitates the teamwork. And it's not only about structural analysis. It's also about fluid flow analysis, plastic injection analysis, electromagnetics, even motion studies. Simulia, using the technology of Abacus, combined with power, with the power of the cloud and the collaboration, brings you to the next level of simulation. We are now ready to move on to the next topic. Let's continue with flow simulation. In the 2023 release, we have new enhancements that will improve the pre-processing and post-processing of your flow analysis. Let's have a look at the general settings of the flow simulation analysis. If you need to enable the radiation feature to take into account heat transfer by radiation, there's a new option in the solar radiation. It's the turbidity factor. But what exactly is the turbidity factor? Think about the environment. It's like a optical thickness representing the effects of the absorption of the water vapor and the absorption and scattering of the aerosol particles relative to a clean and dry atmosphere. So a value of three here would be equivalent to a clean sky. A value of six or seven would be for a polluted environment. Next, we have a new option for the geometry recognition. It is now faster to recognize the geometry which will facilitate the meshing. So in this sea scooter model, there is a fan on the back. It's an internal fan. So we're going to use this simple disk geometry and apply a fan to it. But we need information on the fan. Using the fan curves, we can characterize a fan to specify the volume flow rate as a function of the pressure difference, as usual. But new in 2023, 
we have more options. The radial velocity and the, and the tangential velocity. So yes, in other words, we add more flexibility when it comes to defining the fan curves. So we can have the equivalent of the volume flow rate as a function of the radial velocity. All right, let's have a look now at the goals and see what's new here. When defining new goals, we now have the ability to define a, the total energy balance goal. We can now define more goals, such as the total energy balance, some heat generation rate goals, and some radial and axial velocity goals as well. Now for the user interface for the, for the flow simulation tree, we have more options regarding the tree order. It is now possible to sort the elements in the tree chronologically or alphabetically by using the following two options, chronological or alphabetical. So it makes it a lot easier to find the goals that you have defined, depending on how you would like to sort the information. Also available in Flow Simulation 2023 for the conductive porous media, the heat exchange between a fluid and solid porous matrix can now be dependent on density and velocity, which means a better accuracy for compressible fluids, such as the gases. The solver monitor has been improved. In fact, the solver can optimize the freeing of the memory during the calculations, speeding up the last iteration calculations, which allows to run the analysis faster. It's possible to display the incoming and outgoing conduction, radiation, and convection heat fluxes for the whole task and ambient, giving you the ability to show more results. For the plots in general, it's possible to crop the data by fluid region or material. By cropping a plot, such as a surface plot, we can look at the results in a local region. So in this example here, we could use the drop data option and show the results to bodies where a specific material has been applied to and only for that region. And for the Transcend Explorer, again, we now have more options when it comes to the exportation of the results. You can now export results for a specified time range with a given time step or for the active time moment. This ends the flow simulation section. It's now time to jump into the next topic. Let's take a look now at SOLIDWORKS inspection. SOLIDWORKS inspection has always sought to dramatically reduce the amount of time and effort that is required to create first article inspection documentation. Well, with SOLIDWORKS inspection 2023, takes that ATO up a level with improvement in speed, control, and consistency. First up is that it has a clean new look with the whole interface update. This interface update is more concise, making each option clear and easy to identify. Current and new standalone users alike will be thrilled to discover that the all new auto ballooning Capability now extend to file format such as PDF files. The previously existing Smart Extract feature has been replaced with the new Auto Extract command. The Auto Extract command is now a one stop shop that handles auto ballooning for all sport files 2D or 3D. This provides an enormous jumpstart 
to the process and will save huge amount of time setting up inspection report from PDF files. Inspection brings added intelligence to cases where manual ballooning is used as well. Manual extract will now identify the characteristic selected and eliminates the need to switch back and forth between specific tools. When working with the SOLIDWORKS add-in, inspection setup can now be fine-tuned with a set of criteria, sequences that now can be created and named for future use. These sequences set a custom starting point that can be applied for a variety of purposes. Auto extract can now be limited by sheet, as well for an added level of control. By default, all sheets will be included with a default starting value, which can of course be adjusted. Each sheet can now follow its own sequence or continue on from the previous sheet's numbering. Take advantage of the power of the automated ballooning in more situations than ever before with added control over sheets and sequences. Cleanup and reorganization has been enhanced as well. The characteristic tree now provides a pane where balloon numbering can be viewed and modified by sheets or drawing view. Reordering all balloons at once is now as easy as drag and drop to reorder sheets. All balloons involved will automatically be updated instantaneously. Likewise, reordering a drawing view result in the same effect. In the characteristic table, balloons can be reordered by view or manually dragged. Along with the ability to fine-tune ballooning per sheet, come the export of multiple sheets as well. Just like creating balloon per sheets, the export options now allow for control over included sheets per documents. This applies to PDF export as well as Excel outputs. SOLIDWORKS inspection is more consistent, more intelligent, and more efficient than ever before. Take advantage of that power, retain the control, and get your inspection documentation done faster with the brand new Inspection 2023. Now I will pass the hand to Flo, my colleague, that will continue in the launch. Thank you. Let's continue with SOLIDWORKS Composer, which is our solution to help you create your technical documentation. All right, so let's have a look at the help menu. We have this new option, which is to use the web help. When this option is enabled and we go to the contextual help, it will bring us straight to the last view feature, in this case, which is the views pane directly in the online help. The online help of Sarways Composer has been available for years, but in the 2023 release, it is now integrated into SolidWorks Composer. All right, let's now have a look at the views and see how we can or better organize them. It could be a pain to have many, many views to manage. Just like in this case here, we may have some geometry position views, some camera position views, maybe some detailed views, and even some exploded views. So we have this new option, which is to create a view collection. Simply make a selection of, of a view or multiple views and add a collection just like this. So this makes the views management a lot easier. We can classify views into different categories. To make a view collection, the default view collection, simply make a right click on it and activate the collection. So when you create your new views, they will all go into that collection called the default collection. And yes, for those using SolidWorks Composer, the same structure 
will be available. Also available in Solaris Composer 2023, when you import ProE and STEP files into Solaris Composer, the meta properties will be included as well, saving you some extra time creating those properties again. This ends the SOLIDWORKS Composer section. We are now ready for the next part. Let's continue with SOLIDWORKS Electrical. With the 2023 release, we are going to focus on tools to get a more accurate design and a better documentation of your deliverables. So let's have a look at this electrical design. When working on an electrical design, we may need to make changes. So we may need to add components, but we also need to delete components. In the previous versions of Solarix Electrical, when deleting components, it could happen that, that the action is declined because of some because some entities are still associated to the components, such as the symbols. But with the 2023 release, it's much easier now. We get warnings. Telling us that this operation cannot be undone. And just like this, we have just deleted two components. Let's now explore a new connection label. With a right click on a symbol, we have this new dynamic connection label. So we can insert this label based on a configuration. Let's now delete this connector symbol. We see that some important information is gone. Let's try again. But this time, let's go to the project configuration and enable this allow open-ended wires option and let's see the difference these wire information can now be part of the deliverables speaking about the deliverables let's see what's new in the reports let's first generate a wireless and single bum report there's nothing new here What's new is the ability to copy and paste a report. So after that a table has been copied, it can be pasted in any drawings. It could be a scheme. It could be a line diagram. It could be a cable. It could be a cabinet layout as well. And the information stays associative. In the previous versions of Solarix Electrical, when inserting an image, we only had one choice for the file format, the BMP image. But now with the 2022 release, we have more options, JPEG, PNG, TIFF, and many more. So simply insert the image, configure it, and place it on the scheme or the line there or the line diagram. All right, we are now we are now ready to produce a PDF to summarize the project. So let's export it as a PDF file. New with the 2023 release is a new option here to set the orientation to automatic. 
So let's generate a PDF file. This option will automatically change the orientation so we eliminate manual tasks when it comes to making sure that the drawing has the correct orientation. Just like here, we have some, some drawings with a landscape format. And we also got some with a portrait format. All right, let's now see what's new with SonicWorks Electrical 3D. But first, let's have a look at some technical properties of this motor. So we've got the weight, 1.5 kilogram, the voltage, the frequency, the speed, the power, even the price. Now let's jump to SolidWorks Electrical 3D. Let's have a look at the motor where we just saw the electrical properties. Let's open it and have a look at the file properties. It looks like that all the properties that we just saw in the schematic are here. Yes, that means that with the 2023 release, all meta properties are transferred from the schematic to SolidWorks, saving you a lot of time with some manual tasks of creating the properties again. Let's take a look at the mass properties. So we see this 1.5 kilogram mass. We also have a note specifying that the value was changed by the user. Okay, let's see what else that we have. The user interface has been slightly changed. We have some new icons, so we can still hide components that are already associated. We can expand the tree and collapse it. These new icons better represent the action to take. If some components have not been associated yet, they will be shown with this transparent icon or thumbnail. So let's associate them and let's do it together. It is now possible to associate multiple components within the same command. So we have this first component and this one and it's done. The thumbnails have been changed to let us know that the components are now associated. As a summary, we have new features and enhancements on deleting components. It's now a lot easier. It's possible to transfer all file properties from the schematic to SolidWorks, and that includes the manufacturer part weight Dynamic connection labels can be created easily. There's a new option in the project configuration on defining open-ended wires. The electrical manager tree has been enhanced with new icons. With SolidWorks Electrical 3D, it is now much easier to associate multiple components within the same command. Reports can be copied and pasted in any drawings when inserting images, we now have additional file formats. And when exporting a project to a PDF file, we have this new automatic orientation option. This ends the SolidWorks electrical section. Let's now jump into the next topic. The 3D Experience platform has a role called Shop Floor Programmer, which gives you access to all of the manufacturing tools you could need on the cloud. There's a setup wizard that provides a guide for setting up your specific machining parameters according to your machines and your best practices. And then, with the help of automatic hole and boundary recognition, generating G-code has never been easier. 
I'll show you this video so you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about. Parts are becoming more complex and delivery times are getting shorter. When you add the advancements of machine tools, it becomes crucial that shops streamline the manufacturing process. Being able to program parts faster and more accurately allows companies to focus on new jobs and not on manufacturing errors. Like you, Sam has many different parts come through his shop. He's able to spend more time bidding jobs and managing the business since he started using Delmia's shop floor programmer. Let's take a look at some of the tools Sam uses to accelerate programming time and reduce manufacturability errors. Sam starts with the setup wizard, which simplifies the task of setting up your working environment with a guided step-by-step -step workflow. The wizard speeds up setup time by defining machine, post-processors, stock, and tooling for any machine in your shop. Defining machining operations is fast, easy, and accurate in Shop Floor Programmer. Automation tools like automatic hole feature recognition will identify the diameter and depth of each hole on the part and assign the appropriate process. Setting machining areas and boundaries can be a timely task in most CAM systems. Automatic boundaries and process specific controls help you fine tune your programs for your specific machines without fear of gouging. Accuracy is paramount. So for the final surface machining, Sam takes advantage of advanced surface finishing to precisely machine the entire surface of the part. Shop Floor Programmer uses the actual surface geometry to calculate the surface paths. This eliminates surface faceting and costly handwork. Advanced surface finishing can also be used for complex 3D geometry, such as the webbing on the bottom of this part. You can also define the boundaries of all operations like this time-intensive machining process by using limiting contours. The selection tools make it easy to define this area using both existing geometry and automatically defined geometry. You can review the entire machining process at any time by running a full machine simulation here you can look for any potential problems and clearly see the different type operations separated by specific colors. Toolpath simulation shows leftover stock, which makes cleanup fast and easy. The graphic representation of the toolpath laid over the part gives you a clear view of each operation. Once satisfied with his results, Sam just saves the NC code and sends it off to his machine. He knows the code is right because Shop Floor Programmer supplied him with proven post-processors specific to the machines in his shop. Once the job is running, Sam has constant visibility through the 3D Experience platform. He knows that having all of his data in one place helps his team communicate any changes that may come up. The Delmia Shop Floor Programmer role empowers users to program any machine in their shop quickly easily and accurately, slashing design to production cycle time, resulting in more accurate parts and faster time to market. As you can see, Delmia Shop Floor Programmer provides the perfect manufacturing solution on the 3D Experience platform. Some highlights here would be that on top of the various manufacturing methods that are available to you, like 2.5 axis and 3 axis milling, you can leverage things like feature recognition, multi-part programming, and integrated machine simulation to really increase your throughput. On top of that, you can take advantage of real-time collaboration since you're working in the 3D Experience platform. And then for those of you who are familiar with the post-processing solution iCAM, it's been announced that their 2 and 3 axis development software will be integrated into the platform as well. Finally, with every seat of Shop Floor Programmer comes Wire EDM for simulating, validating, and programming Wire EDM processes. That'll do it for me and Integrated Manufacturing. Next up, I'm going to hand you off to my colleague. Wow, so many new features, so many new improvements in the SolidWorks 2023, and also the 3D Experience Works. So I'm pretty glad that uh, Flo talked to us about all those improvements plus the cloud power that you have also available at the tip of your fingers. So um, this is the time. It's the time to uh, hand this presentation 
I just want to thank the whole team, Flo, Chang Ping Lu, Hollywood, Alex Abridge, all the other guys that work also to prepare this lunch, the marketing team, the sales team, we are all in it together to make this event a great event for you guys. I'm inviting you to our next year launch. So it's going to be SolidWorks 2024 and the 3D experience work as well. Um, don't hesitate to go to our website for any information that you would have missed. Um, any other information you would like to know, uh, write to us. We will be there to answer you. Uh, phone us, we'll answer you as well. If you want us to go and see you, well, that can be arranged also. I'm going to be glad to be able to go and visit you guys. Again, thanks for being there to our event. So from Trickshot here, saying goodbye. See you next year.